Hey y'all, welcome back to day 14. Um, if you saw my last video, then you know I had some epoxy right here. Um, so I'm just going to start this video off by going ahead and taking all of this off. Now you'll notice when I take that top piece off, there's a bubble right there. Um, and honestly, I'm just not going to worry about it right now. If it really bothers me, I'm going to come back to it later. But it's supposed to rain, so I want to at least get the trim piece on this corner. So I don't have to worry about it leaking anymore right in this area. So I'm going to go ahead and clean off um, all of these trim pieces. I have the other corner piece because I already put the other one on. So this is the left side corner piece. Um, and then I have the um, strip kind of on the bottom that holds the metal piece on. Um, and I'm going to clean both of those off, scrape all that butyl tape off. And then I'm going to reapply new butyl tape. Um, Y'all already know I like my butyl tape. So definitely use butyl tape whenever you take these pieces off. Um, as you can see, my son's coming out asking me if he can come help me. So I'm going to have to find a job for him. Um, usually I tell my kids no, but I do like to encourage them to be able to work with their hands like I do. So he's going to join in this video later to help me put on a roof vent. Now that I got a clean new butyl tape on, um, I'm going to go ahead and put this corner piece on. Like I said before, on the other side, you want to try to get the screw in the original hole that it was in. Um, and I do this just to make sure that everything is going to line up when I get up to the roof and when I put the trim pieces around the bottom. Next, I'll go ahead and put that screw trim cover on. Like I said, I highly recommend this. Um, works better in the heat and it just goes right on. After that, I'm going to go ahead and seal this um, top piece right here that's on the roof. So since I have both pieces on, I do actually cover both side pieces and this whole top rail. Um, so make sure you get that good and covered in self-leveling sealant. And after that, I went ahead and went back down and started to put this side piece back on. That's the one that I just cleaned off and put butyl tape on. Um, again, lining it up and getting it in the same screw holes as it was before to make sure it's in the right position. So this fridge vent finally came in. Um, there's actually the cap and the cover. Uh, there's two pieces to this, so I was just waiting for those to come in before I could put them on. Um, so this is my son right here putting on the butyl tape on the bottom of this. Um, and then we're just going to go ahead and stick it up on the roof and screw it in. And I know most of you probably don't know this, but I do have three boys. Um, and so I'm technically the weird mom, as you can see right there. Always looking for ways to embarrass my kids because they spent so much time embarrassing me when they were smaller. So anytime I can make it up, I'm going to take it. All right, just like the other ones, you make an X, you cut it, and then you staple it in. Um, nothing crazy, pretty easy. And then I heard my son scream and I came over he's like, there's this weird bug. I don't even know what this is. I'm going to be honest, but it looks nasty and crazy. So we smushed it and we moved on. And I was honestly lazy and didn't want to bring out my pneumatic stapler. So I just used the hand staple gun and went with that. Um, so I'm centering this right here um, on the roof. Basically just center it in the hole and then put the screws in. Nothing crazy to it. This one is plastic. So you definitely don't want to over tighten it because it will curl up. Um, and after you get this on, you'll want to let it sit in the sun for about a week and then go back and check to make sure that your sealant didn't pop back up. And my son wanted to screw this side in, so I feel like that's a pretty easy job he can do. Plus, I feel like it's really important for kids to learn um, how to screw something in because I don't know if you've ever given your kid something to screw in, but they tend to strip it sometimes. So he's gotten pretty good about not over tightening things. Anyway, um, put some sealing on this, just like all the other ones. Um, and then uh, you can go ahead and put the top part of this on. Now this kit does come with little brackets, but I didn't need them because this is actually, they're both Camco, so I don't need the adapter brackets for it. Um, but I basically just pre-drilled the holes and then you just line the holes up and screw it in. I really hate putting these covers on and I wish they would design them differently and put like actual screws in them versus like bolts because it just really irritates me that they don't screw in properly. And then I was fixing to put the antenna in and I went inside and found these little cuties hiding in the cabinet. Aren't they precious? Um, I haven't had a floor in this camper for like three weeks so I guess a bird got in and made a nest so I guess I'm just gonna have to wait on that. So while I'm waiting for these babies to go away um, I'm gonna go ahead and work on this slide. 
It's got some um, damage on the bottom. So it's not really damaged because all of this is aluminum frame. Um, but I need to replace the bottom of it because it's completely rotted away and warped and nasty and it's just going to be easier this way. So I'm starting off by taking the um, trim pieces off on the side. Now the one on the left side didn't have a screw that's kind of towards that inside wall, but this one did. So in order to take all the screws out, I had to bring the slide in, take the last screw out from the inside, and then I could run the slide back out and then take this trim piece off. So keep that in mind if that happens to you and there's a screw on the inside, you're going to have to put the slide in to be able to get to it. Now that those pieces are off, I'm going to go ahead and take this, um, all these bottom screws out right here. There's about 12 million of them. Um, so take those out and then there's actually two like square corner pieces on each side. Those also need to come out. It's just three screws and then it pops off. Same thing on the other side three screws and then that corner piece will go ahead and pop off and then that whole bottom trim piece will now be free and you can go ahead and slide it off um, now it does i should have taken the it's got roofing tape on the side on both sides i should have just taken that off before i even tried to get this off um, but you know it just didn't i just didn't think about it i thought it would come off because it was kind of corroded and rotten enough but that was not the case this roofing tape's pretty tough so as soon as I got that off, I can go ahead and start working on getting this floor out right here. It's not really a floor. It's just a panel with filon on it. But there's some screws on there. So I took all those screws out. And then after that, um, it pretty much just kind of folds down like that. Um, there's, there's not really much to it. It's pretty wet and gross under there. So I'm just going to take this whole thing out and replace it with um, a whole new piece. Now there's one piece of this that wasn't really rotten um, and so I'm going to go ahead and separate it and then I have my multi-tool right there and I'm going to score it and just take out that one corner piece that's still um, kind of not rotten and it's got foam attached to it because there's no way I'll be able to slide it out with that in place. Um, so after I get that off... Um, I realized that I needed to uh, basically jack up the slide in order to take it out. I tried kind of lifting it up, but it, it, there was too much pressure on it for me to be able to move this piece of wood right here. So I went outside and moved something, and then I found this little cutie. Look at it. And then I tried to grab him, but he was like, no, I don't really think so. It was just a little brown snake. And he basically just slithered away, and that was it. So I was kind of sad he didn't let me hold him, but that's okay. There will be more snakes. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and jack this side up. As you can see, I just have a sawhorse with a bottle jack and a piece of wood. Um, and I move it all the way up. It's kind of the twisty top ones where you can adjust them. Um, and then I just move it up just a little bit. All I need is an, a sixteenth of an inch, really, to be able to pull that bottom piece all the way out. Um, so as you can see, I pulled it out from one side and the other side pretty much came out. Now, originally, this slide was built as a dinette, but I am not going to rebuild it as a dinette because I don't like it and there was no couch in here. So I am actually going to rebuild this as a jackknife sofa, kind of like the one that I made in the last horse trailer that I did. Um, it'll slide out. It'll basically fold down into a bed if somebody wants to use it as that and then slide back out into a couch. So in order for me to do that, I need to cut this framing shorter because I don't need it to come out all the way. Plus it kind of sticks out and it's like an eyesore when you walk in. It's like right there in your face. So what I'm doing is I'm measuring. Um, there's the wheel well right there and I want it to come out um, basically to cover that wheel well. So I basically just measured... Um, as far out as I need to go to cover the wheel well and I use my square to make some marks and then I'm just using an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel to basically cut off the aluminum frame right here. Now normally I would be doing this from the other side but I don't really have a lot of floor space to work with and I'm trying not to sling like crap in my face which I'm already doing but... That's okay. It's, I mean, it's really flimsy metal, so it goes off pretty easy. Um, so I just cut my marks that I made. I made a mark on all three sides and then cut it all the way down so I can cut it flush on that bottom piece. Um, same thing on this side, just cut all three and then it, it pretty much just comes off after that. I mean, this stuff is like so flimsy and I mean, aluminum is so soft, it's so easy to cut through. It's not like steel where it takes a little bit. 
So now that I have that cut off, I'm going to um, put some supports in and kind of rebuild it. So I'm cutting this um, piece of two by four to an inch and a half, which is the thickness of the aluminum frame that's already there. Um, so I'm going to cut some pieces to kind of put between those two pieces that I cut. Um, and then I'm going to make a really big U to stick in front of the other piece that's in the middle. So you'll see what I'm talking about once I start putting it together. So you see I have a, um, a piece of wood that's going from that left side all the way to that right side. Basically just drilled some pilot holes and screwed some three inch screws in from the aluminum into the wood. And I did that on both sides um, and then repeated the process on the other side of the slide. Now for this middle piece right here, um, it's basically the same thing. I put two pieces on each side that were about five inches long and I screwed those pieces into the actual frame. And then this long piece right here, I screwed those directly into those two little pieces of wood that I already screwed on. Um, and then my plan is to span the length of this with a front um, that will eventually add a little bit of support when somebody's sitting on this slide. Um, so once I actually build this out, y'all will see like the thought process in my brain. Um, it may not make sense right now, but I promise you once I actually build this couch, it'll make a whole lot more sense. All right, so now that I've got that framed out, I'm going to work on cutting the new piece that's going to be on the bottom. Um, so y'all already know I like my saw guide right here, and I basically just measure how long I need it. Um, the width is already correct because it's a whole sheet of plywood is how wide the original piece was, which worked out great. Um, so I'm going to cut this with my circular saw. Um, and then after that, I get the old piece that was on the bottom because there's actually two little spots that um, have a little divot in it because of the way the slide comes in. So I'm going to mark those pieces on the corner. Um, the problem is, is how these are made. They're made out of the factory. So they basically just slap a piece of plywood and the phylon on the bottom and then they use a router and they just cut out whatever shape it is that's extra. But I can't do that right now because the slide is still attached to the camper. So this is the next best thing for me. Um, and it actually worked out really good. Um, so those little pieces that I have to cut off, I just use my jigsaw, cut them off. And then um, this is actually just a tarp. So this is going to serve as the bottom um, protective layer that's going to be exposed to the elements. Um, this is just a really thick tarp. You can use the actual material that is sold by like RV manufacturers. But this tarp is basically the same material and it's way cheaper. So I have just been using this. Um, the first time I did this, I actually did it on my personal camper. My fifth wheel had some damage to one of the floors. That was a year and a half ago that I repaired that and it's still holding up amazingly. Um, so I'm just going to use this because it worked really well the last time I used it. Um, and all I'm doing is getting some spray adhesive and just kind of working um, all of the kinks out. It's okay if there's a little bit. I'm just trying to make it as smooth as possible. The um, adhesive that I used here, I like the Gorilla Glue one better, but this is just the one that I had in the shop. So if you're going to do it, definitely suggest using the Gorilla Glue spray adhesive because it works a hundred times better. All right, now time to put it in. So I assumed because I had got it out with that little bottle jack right there that it would go in that way, but that was absolutely not the case. So I had to come up with something different. So what I ended up having to do was go on the inside and there's a, um, the basically the very corner of the slide, I had to put a jack on it and jack the corner of the slide up, not the actual frame, the corner of the whole slide. And then it slid in on that one side then the other side was still too tight. So I had to get that jack and go inside and jack it from the inside on the same piece just on the opposite side of the slide. Um, after I did that, it slid in perfectly. You don't need a whole lot of room, just enough to slide it in. Um, and as you can see right there, it's still not quite in all the way. And I was looking just to make sure I wasn't catching on that corner piece that I cut out. And I wasn't, so I just got a block of wood, slammed it in place, and it fit perfectly. 
So next I'm just getting that tarp material and I'm kind of tucking it and pulling it tight underneath the aluminum frame here. And then I am getting some screws and screwing that piece directly into the frame that's there. Um, this just gives it a little extra support. I don't have to worry about the screws because this slide is not touching the floor. Definitely don't do this if your slide's touching the floor. You don't ever want any screws underneath like that because it'll rub on your floor every time you bring it in and out. But this is suspended up in the air so I don't have to worry about that. Now from the outside, I'm putting those screws that were um, in there originally back in. They weren't corroded or anything, so I figured I didn't have any screws that were like, this is like three and a half inch long screw. They were super long. Um, I didn't have any of those, so I just put the original ones back in. And now it's time for me to get ready for VBS tonight, so I will see you guys tomorrow.